What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. This is TWA Motorsports and today we're going to work on the Z06. Now, what are we going to do? Well, obviously the thumbnail probably gives that away, but we are getting rid of the four wheel drive option on this car. Now these cars come from the factory with an amazing amount of wheel gap. Just look at the gap that this has on this car. It's absolutely crazy guys. It looks so stupid. And Here's the crazy part. So I lower all, everything, just about everything. Okay, the Buick's not lowered, but we slam the trucks. The SS is slammed. The Camaro is slammed. The Trans Am is slammed. Why is the Corvette not slammed? So today we are going to work on that. And it's relatively simple. So I'm not gonna do anything crazy. I'm not changing the bolts out. Uh, you can get different bolts, but all you really need to do this, guys, is you need something to keep the car from rolling off on you. So I'm gonna use some bricks just to put in front of the front tires, but you need two jacks. And the reason you need two jacks, you'll see in here, here in just a minute, but you really need one to lift the car and need another one to put under the leaf spring so it can lift that leaf while you're actually adjusting what we need. The only other thing we need really is a 10 millimeter bolt or a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench. And that is what I'm going to be using. If I need to use a ratchet, I will, but I'm pretty sure I can do it with the ratcheting wrench. This car is so new that it shouldn't be rusted up or anything like that on the threads. But the very first thing we're going to do uh, is take some measurements and see where it's at currently. So you want to try to make sure that you put it in the exact same spot when you get back, because obviously you're going to have to drive it and get it to um, settle out. So I've kind of got it even with my lift and about three foot up. You want to try to make sure, sometimes people put some tape on the ground, but we're going to get a measurement starting here. So we are at 28 and a half driver's side rear. The driver's side front is 27 and a little over a quarter. Passenger side front is Wow, 27 and an eighth. And this literally looks to be the biggest gap of them all. Uh, 28 and three quarters. So now that we got the measurements, guys, let's go ahead and, uh, like I said, I'm going to put some blocks under the front and uh, we're going to get the rear up first. I'm going to do the rear first. Now, once you have the uh, blocks in front of the wheels you there's a couple things you can do so I do have the little hockey pucks um, Or actually they're made by K tech. It's a nice billet piece that slide into the side um, That you would use on a lift, but I'm wanting to do both sides at one time So I'm gonna be lifting from the cradle underneath the rear end. I Wanted to show you guys kind of where I'm putting the jack. So there's two sections of this rear cradle I'm using the front section and I'm just centering the jack within it now You could use this back section as well um, but the preference is the front one So once you get it off the ground, you can see where I'm shining my light. Hopefully You can see the top of This bolt right here is what we're going to be adjusting. Hopefully you guys can see that and this arm right here This is your leaf spring This is where we're going to be putting the second jack and you don't have to do that But it really helps because it relieves a lot of the pressure on that bolt while you're trying to run it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn that to where there are more threads showing on the top. So let's see if I can get a little closer. So we're going to turn that until there's more threads showing on the top and the bottom. And I'm just gonna bottom it all the way out. So you can see there's quite a bit of threads between the actual piece here and the bottom where the rubber starts. We're gonna run that all the way up to here. So now you can see that I have the jack up against that leaf spring and um, I would I wish I had a block of wood to be quite honest with you But I don't want to scratch anything. This car is brand new and um, I know it's kind of petty I'll probably run over something and scratch this later, but I'm really picky So now I'm gonna go grab my wrench and we are going to loosen that up Now I decided to go ahead and take the wheel off to give you guys a better look I just couldn't get a very good angle, but you can see the bolt right there and you can see the rubber underneath it. That is what we are running up. So I wanted to give you guys a really good look because sometimes the pictures online are really hard to see, but the top is a 10 millimeter and that's what we are going to be adjusting. So I wanted to reposition the, um, the bottom jack because it, when I was trying to turn it, you're wanting to turn it counterclockwise and um, I was unable to do that because the I didn't have enough pressure relieved off of it. So now I'm actually turning it by hand. 
So let's see if I can hold the light and show you guys. It's actually turning really easy. I can turn it all the way up just by hand. But you guys have to realize that mine's, you know, it's it doesn't even have 500, it just hit 500 miles. So there's not a ton of miles on it. If yours are rusty, you may have to spray some um, penetrating oil on there, but we have it all the way bottomed out. So that rubber pad, you can see, well, we're not quite there. We got a little bit way, a little bit further to go, but once we get it all the way up, then we'll go to the other side and uh, do the other side. Now we're on to the other side and same thing guys, I'm able to turn it with my hand. And then when I get to a point where I can't turn it with my hand anymore, I'm just putting my ratcheting wrench in there and going counterclockwise. Now, once you get it ran down all the way, you can go ahead and release the pressure. I put a brick up there because I was getting, getting a little more pressure with that. So release the pressure. And then we can set the back down and move on to the front. Now on the front, I am going to use one of my billet pieces and they just slide into a spot on the bottom of the car. If I can locate it, there it is. So hopefully you guys can see where I'm gonna be putting this in here, right here. And this turns and this gives me a jacking point that's lower than the ground effects on the side. Now, you can use a hockey puck. A lot of people do that. I will list these in the description down below, but I'm gonna go grab my jack. We're gonna jack this side up, and we may have to turn the wheel a little bit to get to the area that we need, but let's get the jack under here first. Now that it's lifted up, I did go ahead and turn the wheel all the way to the right, um, and that's just gonna give me access back here to reach that bolt. The next thing we need to do is we need to get our other jack into place. Same thing, we're gonna push up on that uh, leaf pack in the front So now you guys I've got my flashlight under here. Sorry. It's such a mess. It's so dark um, You can see right here. That is what we are adjusting It is right behind the shock and I'm able to tighten or sorry loosen it with one hand as well And then I'll put the 10 millimeter on the top and go ahead and run it the rest of the way Now, once we get that one bottomed out, we can go ahead and release the pressure on the spring pack. Get it and the brick out of the way. Let this side down. We can turn the wheel the other direction and get the other side and that will be it. Once we have both the jacks in place, go ahead and slide under here and do the very last one. Once we have that side finished, we can go ahead and let both of our jacks down. Pull them out of the way. And do not forget to take your puck, or in my case, that K-Tech piece out from under here. Whatever brand that you get, k 
KTEX are kind of expensive, but they're billet. And they just turn and lock. So make sure to get these out. They do not need to stay in the car. Now guys, if you took any of the wheels off, you need to make sure that you torque them back and they get torqued to 100 foot pounds, which is crazy because the SS out there is 140. Maybe it's 120. I feel like my G8 or something was 140, which seems like a lot, but torque these to 100. This is the only wheel I took off and I just did that. So hopefully you guys can see a little bit better what I was working on. But once we get this done, we're gonna drive it down the road because independent rear suspension cars independent cars all together when you lift them up the tires tuck under so you're not going to get an accurate reading and you're probably not going to get an accurate reading for a little while until the suspension really settles maybe like 100 miles a friend of mine said it was 200 miles before his actually settled out to where it was going to stay but uh, we're going to drive it up the road and then we'll make a quick measurement and kind of see where we finished up so guys i have driven it actually to get it aligned and uh, that was about 50 miles from my house so we got about 100 miles total there and back and uh, it has settled some, but let's take a measurement of what it's at currently. So the rear is at 27 and a half. The front is at 26 and 3 sixteenths. I'm not sure our concrete's real level here, but this side is 26 and just under 3 sixteenths. And the last one here is 27 and 5 eighths. So we'll look and see what the difference is. Well, if I'm doing my math correctly, it came down a little bit more than an inch in the back. Same thing in the front, but it does look a lot better, guys. We got rid of a lot of that fender gap. Now, I was able, like I said, to drive it to the dealership and it wasn't too far out of alignment but it is something that you need to check anytime you lower a vehicle now there are a couple options for lowering these cars you can do the bolts the stock bolts run those down you can also trim some of the uh, rubber off the bottom which i thought about doing but the very first time out of my driveway after i did that it did rub this lower piece of plastic and to be quite honest with you i want to be able to drive this thing i don't want to have to worry about you know watching for speed bumps and whatnot but uh, the other options you have is there's aftermarket bolts where you take those bolts completely out. You can get it quite a bit lower with those. And then if you have a ton of money laying around, $3,000 buys you a set of billet drop uh, spindles. That is ultimately the best way to lower one of these, but I'm not spending three grand to lower this car. Just not worth it. But it is also the easiest vehicle to lower, especially because it costs no money. So you have no money involved to just crank these down and then GM warranties out um, at least for the first six months on the Corvette an alignment. So and I think the reason they do that is you guys, have, if you've ever been to the factory, they run it over some rumble strips and they align it in about 15 seconds. So it's not real accurate from the factory. It's best to have it on an alignment machine. But while I was there, I also got the break in oil change done. And uh, like I said, guys, I think it's looking a lot better. But hopefully this was informative. Hopefully it gave you some good angles and shots of what you need to do in order to get these things a little bit lower to the ground and get rid of some of that four-wheel drive look and uh, as you guys know i lower everything so it was just it was crazy that the one that cost me no dollars to lower was the very last vehicle in the driveway that i lowered but if you did like this video guys like always smash that thumbs up button if you're not subscribed go down and hit that subscribe button make sure you ring that bell icon that way you're notified every single time we drop a new video and well stay tuned so we'll